Cheech here with Fly Fish Food, and we're here with skill builder number 13. We're gonna show you how I use cups to organize my hooks and beads while I tie. We're gonna show you how to wrap hackle through resin to make it super durable, and we're also gonna show you how to make your own barred rubber legs. Bead and hook organization and how it applies to tying at the vise, okay? So, I have all these cool foaminizers. I've started, uh, you know, putting beads and hooks in little containers like this. They're all different sizes for different sizes of, of them. So, for example, right there, there's a 2461. So, when it's time to tie, it's kind of hard to get in here. You know, I'm like the guy in the Pringles commercial that can't get his hand down in the Pringles. Like, I have a formal complaint out there against Pringles. They haven't responded to me, but like, I'm the guy that has to drink the Pringles like a soda. I can't get my hands in there, Brigham. Okay, so anyway, because if you have Pringle hands, you need something like this. Now, this is kind of overkill, which is a lot of stuff that I use, but these are made by Peak. And they're these really nice brushed aluminum just cups that sit on the vise. Cork on the bottom. And the way that I like to do it, if I'm going to tie, say, a bunch of flies that have a size 16 jig hook and a slotted 3 mil bead, this is what I would do. I'll take all the hooks. That's my size 16 Hannock 400. And these are all the 3 mils that I have in my collection right now. Now, as you can see, I have all the colors in one spot, and that's fine. That's the way I prefer to do it, because if I had a separate one of these for every size and color of bead that I had, I'd have to have thousands of these things. So, for me, it works. I have a little bit of artist brain, so it's fine. If you're super organized, this may not work for you, but it works great for me, because all you do is you pick around here, boom, I got a gold bead, got a pink bead, so anyway figure out something that works for you. So this way you can set those to the side, you grab a hook, you grab a bead, and when you're done, the hooks go in pretty easy. I just put it in my hand and scoot those back in there. And I do the beads the same way. So you're just going to scoop those up And if you can do this without spilling beads, which you will learn how to do because they're expensive, but anyway, there's no beads spilled. Cheech's hot dog fingers could do it. Pringles hands could do it. The other hack here is, as you can see, I'm just writing what that is on, on this with a Sharpie. If I ever want to change that, just take some hand sanitizer and a Q-tip, wipe that off, and then write whatever else you want on there. Cheaper than a label maker, faster than a label maker, and you get to stare at your very beautiful and artistic handwriting. Anyway, hooks and beads by Cheech, there you have it. Here, I have a little Griffiths gnat type fly with some resin, so this is resin. You can see this is all soft. I've added some resin to the fly. You can do this with woolly buggers as well. But I'm gonna show you a technique to wrap the hackle through resin to make it super, super durable. I may have taken off too much. I'm just gonna put a little bit more resin on that and we'll get it formed up. But the key here is having a rotary vise and um, a little bodkin. You can tease it on and off of there if you want. And I'm just going to kind of tease that to where I want it, rotate it, just kind of rock it to sleep back and forth. That will make the resin go round. Now, like I said, you could do this on a woolly bugger as well, but I'm just going to take my hackle that I've tied in. I left a little bit of stem showing, and I'm just going to wrap the hackle right through that resin. And it's going to form little, what, what looks like little beads right there. Okay, so I'm gonna tie that off, and then what you're gonna do is once once that's in there, it'll actually hold that shape pretty well. Um, so once it sets, one, once it's exactly how you want it, you just stick a light on there, and now you've got a super super durable body. The, the stem of that hackle is down in the resin, so it's not going to break. You'd have to break off each individual piece of hackle to get this fly to fall apart. Barred rubber legs. Let me just show you how to make them. Like, 
you can make them in any different flavor you want. What I'm going to do is, since I already have a vise on my desk, I'm just going to use that to, to, to grab onto the rubber leg, okay? So it's best to do this all beforehand if you want to, if you want to tie them in, just, you know, when you're ready to tie them in. You could put a normal rubber leg on your fly, leave them long, and do this on the fly as well. And I do that quite a bit, but this is just how to make them in bulk. I prefer the big fat Sharpie because I have big fat fingers. And as you can see, I'm pulling this pretty tight. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pull that tight, and I'm going to start making marks pretty far apart. So see how I have this pulled? There's a lot of give to it. So if I just grab that same tension and I only do, say, half the leg up first. So it's time consuming, but it, it, it totally makes a really awesome leg. Now, you can notice that I'm not going on the underside because what's happening is I'm doing this, it rolls the leg back and forth and it marks both sides. So when I let off of this, now I have a really cool marked leg. The other thing you can do is let's say that I want to add more color to this. We use red because it shows up best on this background, but let's say I had a tan leg and I wanted to add colors. I would just do like every other one black, you know, and then come in here. Let's say I've got a blue marker that just kind of all looks black on this. So do that in the middle. So when you, when you compress that down, you'd have alternating colors. All right. So Time consuming, I'm going to show you a way you can do a bunch of them at once, okay? So here I have four rubber legs. I'm going to put them in the vise the same way. You see how I did that? My vise is very, very thin, and, and they almost don't want to go in if I just push them, but if I stretch them thin, they'll go right in there. Mash those shut. The best way to, to get these apart isn't to come in here and try to peel them apart. Just go like this. Just grab them and, and stretch them like that and they will all separate. So now once you have those separated, you're going to pull those all like that. Now using the same amount of tension on all four, now I can come in here and do the same thing, but we're just doing four of them at a time. So you get the picture here. As I let off of that, compresses down, and now I've got a whole bunch of rubber legs. It works with any rubber leg material, so Spanflex works great as well. So anyway, there you have it. Start churching up those foamy flies with barred rubber legs.